Well hello there guys and um, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad to be here to join me on this video about on Read Aloud again. So I hope, I hope you've been patient and bear with me and I hope I hope you enjoyed um, reading Tinkerbell and Friends, Read Aloud. I hope you enjoyed that. It was Prillo and Tink. So uh, I'll start on halfway through or chapter 3 then I'm still moving on, I'll be moving on to chapter 3. I'm still on page 27 to finish off. And if you, I hope you um, re enjoy reading and you have already subscribed to my channel, it's always appreciate you guys. And I'm, I'm glad you came back for after I had a break. Okay, so. Okay, that's time to finish off. Let's start finish off chapter three. It was after I have read Prilla and the Butterfly Line. I guess I bet you haven't already read, seen me read on my previous video in the first part of Tinkerbell in the Pixie Hollow, just beneath the heart of Leverland. Okay, so oh, well, sorry. Okay, let's begin. They fly, you know, all over the place. Fascinating, she played, babbled. Butterflies, Nettle said. How unusual. She shook her head as if to clear it. That's very interesting. Nettle paused for the moment. Well, I guess you won't be helping us with our calipers today then. I guess not, said Prilla. I'll be focused on butterflies. Nettle growled. Winkled. If you say so, she said. See you later, Nettle, said Prella. She crossed the room and found an empty seat at the keyhole design table. As she sat down, she braced herself, someone to ask her to help with design keyholes. But to her relief, no one did. Instead, the fairies at the table chat chanted, chatted about the designs they were planning to create that day. Prilla smiled and ate her breakfast in silence. She took a big bite of, of a wall, light and flaky and buttery, delicious. The jam was both tart and sweet. Hmm. She had forgotten how hungry she was. As she ate, she thought, a what? About what? She had told Nettle. Not, be, not being truthful to Nettle had been wrong, but Prella had only done it to spare her friend's feelings. There was no reason to think about it anymore. It was over and done with. That is the end of uh, that, Prella thought. That evening at dinner, Prella sat quietly by herself. She thought about all of the ventures she had that day blinking all over to the mainland. She had surprised a little girl struggling over the hand homework problems. She'd cheer up the boy who'd been kept off the school for talk, talking in class. She had played pick a with a baby, who had screamed with delight. She had also visited a toy shop, where she had amused young shoppers by sitting in the engine of a toy train. Then she'd hidden behind a stack of sugar cone, cones in the ice cream pillar, she had flown to the top of her first wheel and made faces at the riders. Later, she'd, she'd sat on the little girl's shoulder at the circus while clowns tumbled and cheerful music played. Ding, 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 Prilla 
looked up to see Cinder tapping the water glass with her fork. A hush fell over the tea room. That was a signal, that Queen Clarion. Clu the leader of all of the Nether Fairies had an important announcement to make. Queen Clarion, lovely and regal, as always, sweeps into the room. She seems a bit anxious. Prilla thought, sitting up straight in the chair. My fellow fairies, Queen Clarion said. I don't want to alarm anyone, but I have some rather unpleasant news to ch to share with, the, with you this evening. She paused for a moment. I'm sorry to tell you that. There has been an outbreak of fairy pox. That was a short collective intake of breath. Several fell fairy have already been infected, the Queen want, went on. The room began to bust. Some of the newer fairies asked the older fairies to explain what a fairy pox was. They hadn't been an outbreak of fairy pox in Pixel Hollows in many years. But it was hard to miss a fairy with a pox. The fairies who got it broke out into a spots. The spots could be bit quite pretty, pale, pink, blue and purple, but fairy pox made fairies dangerously sleepy. A fairy could fell asleep at the table drawn in her soup bowl if if was she, if she wasn't careful, luckily, a plaintive bef bed rest and daily dose of uh, daisy pollen. Those were almost always cured. Over the noise, the queen said, fairy pox may not be life-threatening. But it is very contagious. All ill fairies have been moved to the infirmary. Only nursing turn fairies are allowed to have contact with the sick fairies. So, the rest of you, please keep your distance from anyone who is ill. There was silence. The fairies began to check each other for the telltale spots. Bess, an art talent fairy, looked down at her paint sparkled arms. I forgot to wash up before dinner, she explained. The rest of her fairies at the table laughed nervously. Then they shift away from her just a bit. Iris, a god a garden talent fairy who had been up all night searching for a rare shrinking violet. Let out the jaw popping young. She was surprised when her table mates on both sides of her hastily excused themselves and found seats at another table. Queen Cla Clarion looked around the room. Are there any any questions? Can you tell us who is sick? A light spar a light talent talent sparrow man asked. Queen Clo Clarion gestured towards the nursing talent table. Poppy, would you like to give an update? She asked. Poppy, a jolly nursing talent fairy, stood up. They are the dozen sick fairies so far. She began list them on her fingers. Olivia, Hera, Flora, Marigold, Jordan, Susie, Marius, Rhea, Eldon, Russell, 
Violet and Primrose are ill. She reported, but they are resting comfortably. They are sleeping a lot, as you can imagine. Why just the other fairy other night Georgia was telling a marvellous story about the bo a battle between Cat and Hook and a sea serpent? He fell sound asleep. Just as he got to the best part, I was almost tempted to wake up. Wake him up to see what happened next. Ever rough, Jordan was one of the finest storytelling fairies. So are you, so you see your friends in good hands. They soon be good as new. Poppy sat down. Queen Clarion, Clarion spoke again. So if there are no more questions, the serving telling fairies can bring in the first. Wait, wait, Jason interrupted. He stood up. It it looks like it, it looks like it, each and f every one of the butterfly herders is sick. Or eight of them. Heads swung around to pair and part of the herders' table. Sure enough, it was empty. A look of a look of alarm across the queen's face. The, fair, the butterflies were important to the fairies since they laid the eggs that f became butterflies. If anyone were to happen to the butterfly herd, the, the fairies wouldn't have any caterpillars or any caterpillar bus. Well, the queen said, I am sure we'll have no problem getting volunteers to help with a fairy herd until they are able to return to work. Would you, any, would anyone like to pitch in? She looked around hopefully. Uncomfortable silence filled. Tea filled. The tea room. Some very studied their fox. Others examined their dinner plates very closely. No one would work up no volunteers said the Queen. This is indeed a problem. What are we to do? I know, said a the voice. There's a fairy who would be happy to help out. She loves butterflies. The room began to fuss once more. Everyone wondered who the fairy, who the butterfly loving fairy could be. Prella shanked into her chair until her head was barely level with a table. She had completely forgot about her fairy lie, brother lie. And who is, who is this fairy? Queen Clarion asked. It's Prella, said Nettle. She told, she told me she likes butterflies even, bet, even better than caterpillars, she announced. Prella stared at the at the at the cloth at the tablecloth and her glow turned orange as she blushed. She felt that every fairy in a tea room purring at her curiously. Even the queen looked surprised. Is this true, Prella? she asked. Without looking, Prella spoke. Yes it yes it's true, she said miserably. I did tell Net of that. When Prella finally raised her head, she found herself looking right at Fidia. Who was directly across the room? Fidia rolled her eyes and shook her head. Prella could just imagine what was she was thinking. That silly little fairy had gone done it again. Knock, knock, knock. Raise and shine. Prella, it's time to start your day. A wake up fairy talent fairy called for the door. Prella stru struggled to open her eyes. Was it, was it morning already? 
hadn't she just fell fallen asleep? First, 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 not even up yet. She, up yet. Both I heard in talents suddenly start their day very early. Prella thought she groaned and rolled up her out of bed. She was still half asleep as she pulled a single cotton dress all over her head. She didn't even notice that she put on two different kinds of socks or that her dress was buttoned one. She picked up the her hairbrush she remembered how the Queen had smiled at her gratefully the night before. Good luck tomorrow, the Queen has said. Nef never butterflies are beautiful creatures, my dear. But of course, they are prone too. She stopped and shook her, he shook her head. But you know all about butterflies. You love them. You you have a pro no problem at all. From to not to what? Prella had wanted to ask, but she couldn't let on that she didn't know anything about looking after butterflies. Signing, Prella set down her hairbrush and headed downstairs. Delcy met Prella at the front door. Holding a small sack, she laughed when a, when she saw Prella's sleepy face, mismatched socks. Dulce handed Prella a sack. Your breakfast, she said. A dust and very was waiting outside with Prella's daily dose of fairy dust. She sprinkled a level tea cup, tea cup of dust. Not a smidgen more, or a smidgen less. Either pillar. As it is unusual, it was shivery and cool as it settled on Prella's head and shoulders. Thank you, Prella, she just, pre, thank you, Prella said. She slung the sack all over the shoulder, took a deep breath and ro rose into the air. The sun was coming up out of the hills. The meadow was starting to buzz with the sound of insects. Prilla began to feel better. I'm herding butterflies, not water snakes, for goodness. Sack, sake, she told herself. How hard can, can it be? Woods, valleys, meadows, streams, ponds and beautiful flowers all stretched out beneath her. Prilla turned a few aerial cartwheels and laughed with joy. There was something exciting about being up before everyone else. It made our day seem filled with eventual possibility. Prilla spelt, spied the garden talent fairies, fairy filled gardens. She could pick out Lily's garden by the orange and red poppies, which were a biggest in Pixie Hollow. Prella flew over the parts of Heverdesh stream where the water talent sometimes gathered. Looking back, she could see the home tree small in the distance. She looked down as she passed over the clearing. To her delight, she spotted a herd of butterflies. Prilla hovered in the air, drinking the same. There were about a fifty of delicate creatures. Their wings beat lazily as they sunned themselves in the early morning warmth. And the colours they took Prilla's breath away. There were shades of Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, shimmery gold, burnished copper and shining silver. There were more, built from the biggest and brightest rainbow Prella had ever seen. The sun was bright, 
barely up and shed shed already found a fat butterflies. Why? This this is going to be easy. Prella smiled. She'd be finished so early. She would have plenty of time for a nap and a black either to her home mainland before dinner. Taking a deep breath, she landed quietly in the middle of a butterfly herd. That was when she realised it wasn't sure what to do next. Finding the group was one thing, but Prilla didn't know the first thing about herding them. Mm, hello, butterflies, she said uncertainly. Prilla knew that the butterflies weren't able to understand her, but they didn't stop her from talking to them anyway. I'll be your herder today. Our first stop will be but will be flower field, she said. Flower field was a nearby meadow filled with wildflowers of all shapes, sizes and colours. Sadie, Queen Anne's lace, snappy green black eyed Susans, lovely Indian paintbrush. It seems like a perfect place for butterflies. So let's go. Quilla said, clapping her hands. And to her delight, all the butterflies left off into the air. How beautiful, how wonderful, Prilla thought as they rose. They began to circle, so far so good. But without warning, the butterflies stand to start turn off in the different directions. Prilla's heart shank. This wasn't how it was supposed to be. Hey, wait! Prilla shouted. She chased after the blue and purple butterfly and waved her hands to get it to stay with others. But just as she reached it, the butterfly dropped several inches in the air. Prilla found herself headed right with her tree branch. For, se for last second she ducked under it. Just then she noticed the tiny shine, si silvery yellow butterfly had got to got had got quite far away from the others. That wasn't do that wouldn't do at all. Prilla took off after it and chased it back to her herd. But the butterflies wouldn't say, stay together. Prilla hovered in the air, staring at them. She wondered what she was doing wrong. This was exhausting, suddenly Prilla noticed, that the butterflies were starting to move closer together. She watched with, a, with pleasure as they formed one large group. That's more like it, she said. Just as she was about to try to shepherd them to a flower field, she realised that her herd of flower butterflies had started to pick up her speed. They were headed right for her. Stop, stop! Prilla cried. But they kept going. All 50 of them, it would, it would have been beautiful if it hadn't been frightening, so frightening. In a second, the butterflies were upon her. They surrounded her on all sides. Prilla felt a breeze from one, one hundred beating wings. Wait, hey, wait! What are you doing? She said. She found herself being jostled and pushed. The next thing she knew, she felt rough tree bark against her back. Suddenly, the butterflies broke apart. Prilla was dangle dangling from a, tr from a branch high above the ground. What happened? Prilla thought. She turned. She tried to turn around, but she couldn't. Then she understand. Her belt had got caught on a twig. She was stuck. Prilla watched as the swarm of butterflies merrily flew away. 
flitting and fluttering, fluttering, she gazed them after them until they were merely a colorful band across across the sky. Finally, they disappeared from her sight. This is a fine mess you have gotten yourself into. Prella, she scuffed herself. She sighed. The ground was felt was a long way to down. Squirm, she might, as she might, she wasn't budging an inch. Above I had, had, had certainly got off to the disappointment start. Okay, one well, chapter six. A, a slight breeze blew, and Prella, Prella s swelled back and forth in the air. She wondered how well she was going to get down. Thank goodness no one was around to see her. Prella shout, someone shouted. Oh dear, Prella thought. How embarrassing to be caught like this. She looked down at the ground. Pluck, a harvest talent fairy, was, in, was starting up at her. Her hands were on her lip, hips. H her mouth formed an O of surprise. Prella, what are you doing up there? Pluck called up. Oh, I'm just scouting for butterflies, Prella cried. She cupped her hand over her eyes and scanned the horizon. Nope, haven't spotted any, any yet. But she gave them time, but just gave me time. I'll be holding them here and there before you know it. Pluck flew up to hover near Prella's branch. Prella gulped and gave Pluck a big fake smile. That was not meant to say. Things might look a bit out of ordinary to you, but really everything is perfectly fine. But Pluck was having none of that. She, she looked, looked closely at Prella and frowned. It looks to me like you are stuck. Prella laughed nervously. Oh no, this is my special lookout twig, she explained. Don't worry about me. She crossed her arms and smiled. Even though her belt was digging into her wrist. She decided to change her subject. So what are you up today? Up to today? She asked. Pug Pug gave gave Prella a dull odd look. Then she shrugged and began to explain. There were reports of a gigantic bush full of plump juicy berries near Fairfield, she said. Have you spotted it? Prella shook her head, but I'll be sure to let you know if I do. She frowned a pluck. Why wasn't she leaving? So good luck finding the bush. Prella said enthusiastically, blackberries. How delicious. Thanks, said Pluck. She seemed to be thinking about something I know. Why don't you leave your look out? twig for a while and come with me she suggests never never butterflies love berries you know maybe the herd will be there then you can help me harvest the berries and i can help you hide the butterflies it was a good idea hide the butterflies would be such easier with two fairies instead of one but prella could couldn't move without ad admitting she had was stuck and then she would have to explain the for ex thing by the way. She had came to be she come to be stuck. As far as Prella was cornered concerned. That was not a option. Oh oh it's okay, said Prella. I think I'll stay right here for the time being, she smiled. 
as she hadn't a care in the world. Whatever suits you, said Pluck. Then she grinned at Prella. Vice butterflies are something else, aren't they? she said. I have so much respect for the butterfly talents. We all we were all so happy when you all volunteered. Okay. Let's stop it. Okay, let's stop it on page two fifty two and page fifty three. Right, okay, so I just gonna take a break on for the next just taking a break for reading Tinkerbell and Fence. Well, um, I hope you enjoyed it so far. What do you think of we? What do you think of Tinkerbell in the first three parts in this book? And if you if you if you're happy, you can write comments down below. And if you have if you haven't read it, you, you can subscribe to my channel to hear his notification. And um. I will continue reading Tinkerbell in the fourth part. You can always stay tuned and I'll see you guys in a little short while.